My name, Jose Jimenez. No. <laughs> my name is Charlie Weaver, and I got a secret. <laughs> I got a secret. Brought to you tonight by Bristol Myers, makers of Buffering, the modern drug that brings relief from headache pain, protects against stomach discomfort. Bristol Myers brings you America's number one panel show, I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. <laughs> Good evening. Much love to each of you from all of us, and welcome to another edition of I've Got a Secret. Before we meet our first contestant, let's meet our panel. To begin with, there's Bill Cullen, and <laughs> Betsy Palmer, <laughs> and Henry Morgan, who thinks he just saw something backstage, but if you did, it isn't going to help you. And Bess Meyerson, that's our panel. <laughs> Assuming that you're ready to play the game, may we have our first contestant, please. Will you come in? Now, let's try to find out who you are and where you're from. Young lady, will you tell us first? Carolyn Kearney from Delhi, New York. Carolyn Kearney from Delhi, New York, and... Craig Classic from Delhi, New York. Craig Classic, also from Delhi. <laughs> Henry, spray your throat before the show, will you? <laughs> Panel, you see before you two youngsters who have fought their way up through a series of contests in their hometown. Each is now a finalist. Tonight, they're going to face each other on our stage in a final battle for the grand championship. So, Carolyn and Craig, if you'll whisper what kind of contest is to be waged, we'll show it at the same time to our audience at home. Here we go. <laughs> And this is a legitimate contest. Now, panel, the clue concerns the contest they will be competing in shortly. We'll start the game with Bill Cullen, who is convulsed at something. I'll tell you what I'm convulsed at, with what you said about the two very lovely young people there, plus the, the sounds we've been hearing since right before we went on the air. I probably am going to be wrong. Oh, come on, you can't <laughs> say it. Does it concern a... Does your secret concern a cow? No. No. <laughs> Two cows. <laughs> Two cows. No. A bull. No. <laughs> Something that goes like that went. <laughs> Is that way? Is that something? So oh, what did you say? What did you say, Carolyn? She said yes. She said yes. What? You said yes what there? Yes what? It was a bull? No, no she, didn't. she didn't say yes. Oh. No. You're a rumor monger spread. Well, there it is again. <laughs> oh, 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 sheep, sheep, sheep. <laughs> no, not sheep. <laughs> $20 down, $60 to go. I knew you from a city, but I only oh, thought you'd know a duck when you heard one. <laughs> <laughs> Betsy Palmer, please. Sheep go back like that. Of nanny goats or something. Does it have to do with animals? Yes. yes. Thank Does it heavens. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you happen to belong to uh, the 4-H club, both of you? Yes. And this I concept... Do. She does. He does. He does not. He doesn't. You're trying to get in to the 4-H club. No? No. But it has something to do with um, the raising of animals? Not uh, uh, most remotely. Are you showing an animal this evening for the contest? Yes. <laughs> Anyone with half an ear could tell that he was saying, No. <laughs> $40 down, $40 to go. When you say showing an animal, I assume you mean in the, ex in the context showing, yeah, right. of a, a cattle show. That's right. No. right. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to Henry Morgan. <clears throat> uh, Carolyn, you, you're going to have an animal on stage, aren't you? Yes, sir. Now, let, you're an honest girl, I can tell. <laughs> Four, eight. Did, did that noise, we, wasn't that a cow we heard? No. Is it an imit... Is it a very small cow? Calf? Yes, sir. Oh, calf! <laughs> it is a calf. A calf is not a cow. A cow is an adult female of the cattle species. Congratulations to all. <laughs> Sixty dollars down, twenty dollars to go. We go, please, to Beth. I know. That's pretty cool. <laughs> 
<laughs> Carol and Craig, uh, whatever you're going to do to your respective calves, shown. Um, did this require any specific training? No. no. Uh, uh, will we uh, be seeing uh, any uh, kind of product that we're familiar with? Is it a milking contest of some sort? No, milk it's a calf. No. no. <laughs> You can milk a calf in the cattle world. That's juvenile delinquency. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of a product, and I thought, we're not going to cut it out. Well, you've come to the wrong panel. Oh, no, oh, I, I mean, a live or butchering or contest? For heaven's no. sake, Beth. No. Panel this year, the farmers of Delaware County, New York, had a Dairy Lamb Festival, a kind of a farmer's county fair. Uh, those eligible were lung, uh, youngsters who live on farms, 4-H'ers, or future Farmers of America members, they were invited to compete in the contest. And in honor of National Dairy Month, I've Got a Secret will present the final event on this stage, and one of these youngsters will be crowned the champion in a calf feeding contest. Quite legitimate because there are various reasons why young farmers and adult farmers must know upon occasion how to feed a calf without the presence of the mother, and we will show you right now. Will you open the curtains, please? Oh, oh too much. Now look at them, and let me tell you that they're only three days old. Oh, and look at the... Look at the yeah. <laughs> right, now, uh, gentlemen, will you come out, please? The gentleman to my right is Dr. Arthur Davis, who is the official veterinarian who always officiates at these contests. Doctor, nice to have you with us. The second gentleman is the judge of the contest, Mr. Charles Holman. Very glad to meet you. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Holman. Will you explain the rules and uh, procedures of a calf feeding contest? Will you hold my bottle? Sure. <laughs> All right, sir. What are the, what are the uh, Each rules? Each contestant <clears throat> will be given three pounds of milk in a feeding bottle. Three pounds of milk. Three pounds of milk, Harry. The contestant must catch the calf in the pen. The contestant will be given one minute to feed the calf. The contestant who feeds the most milk to the calf wins the contest. And rough handling of the animal will disqualify the contestant. Underscore. Rough handling will disqualify the contestant. Young people now, if you'll come up here, we'll open the gate and let you get in. Capture your animal. I have a stop. I have a stopwatch. And when I say go, go, you each have your three pounds of milk in a bottle. On your mark, get set, go. On this side, we have a scale, and it's calibrated for zero. Remember, we had three pounds of milk, so first we will weigh who? Craig. Craig's. <coughs> it now weighs three pounds and a half. In other words, he was able to feed a half pound of milk to his little calf. The name I of the will. champion will be known. Here goes Carol. Caroline's. She managed to get rid of a whole pound. Caroline, you are the champion. Both of you young people from us, uh, United States Savings Bond, and good luck and a happy future. Gentlemen, Dr. McCollin, thank you both. Thank you. Now then, let me advise you that back in colonial times, 
Many families used to keep a flintlock pistol, and it played a most unusual role when somebody had a headache. The belief then was that if you put the pistol above your head and fired upward, it would pull the pain out of your head. Unless, of course, it set fire to your hair, then you had an entirely different problem. Well, that was in the colonial times. In modern times, many families keep bufferin, the modern drug for headache pain. Bufferin is modern because it's designed for the kind of headache that we get in this day and age, which, as we all know, is the tension headache. That's the headache that hits us on those, day, those bad days when everything seems to go wrong. Now, here's what makes bufferin so right. It not only relieves the headache, it also relaxes tight nerves and it calms upset stomach, which often comes on with a headache. And here's another important point. Doctors, of course, know about bufferin, and they recommend bufferin by name more often than any other leading brand of pain reliever. So the next time the stress and strain give you headache pain, take my advice and take bufferin. Now I would then like to welcome our next contestant, please. Will you come in, gentlemen? Panel, I'm going to refer to these gentlemen as Mr. X and Mr. Y because uh, I can think of at least one of you on the panel who would instantly recognize the names. So we will call them Mr. X and Mr. Y. Mr. X, will you tell us where you're from, sir? Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. Mr. Y, where are you from, sir? Anderson, Indiana. Anderson, Indiana. And it's only fair to tell you, panel, that these two gentlemen have separate secrets, but closely related secrets. So with that hint, Mr. X, will you uh, whisper your uh, secret to me, please? <clears throat> and Mr. Y, sir, if you will. panel to help you classify the secret. The clue concerns something these gentlemen did. And uh, direct your questions to either one that makes no difference. We'll start with Bess, please. Uh, Mr. X, uh, this thing that you did, uh, did Mr. Y do it in his youth? Yes. Ah, something that was done by Mr. Y. Was it um, something that required special training? I would say, both yes. of you gentlemen, that yes, you must train quite yes. rigorously for yes. this. Yes. A uh, special say. education, formal education. Uh, on, on our show, by the rules, when we say special education, we mean a college degree or something of that nature. Uh, special knowledge, certainly, but not formal education. Uh, we... $20 down, $60 to go. We go, please, to Bill Cullen. To Mr. X, uh, the thing you did, sir, was it in the field of athletics? Wouldn't we say, rather than directly athletics, the wide field of sports? Automobiles. Who, who, who are you asking? Mr. Well, both, but Mr. X. Oh, oh. let me... Oh, You're better off than I am. <laughs> let me direct it to Mr. X. Uh, was it, sir, uh, automobiles? Yes. Well, should I then? Sure, in, we Indianapolis all... this year and Indianapolis. Right. Got and you're well, you got him right. You've got him right. You've got him right. This is A.J. Foyt, Foyt, who yeah. won this uh, last week's Indianapolis 500-mile race. Please wait. That's half, that's oh, half of the secret, Bill. The first one. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Y won the first, first Indianapolis Old field? race. No. Absolutely no. right. Ray Haroon. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yes, Mr. Haroon won the first Indianapolis race 50 years ago, which is just marvelous. At a tremendous speed at that time. Absolutely. We'll bring that out. Now, Mr. Point, you certainly rode a thrilling, and I must say somewhat frightening race last week. Now, what was your average speed? A little over 139 miles an hour. 139 miles average. Now, Mr. Haroon, what was your average speed in the first Indianapolis race in 1911? Just a little under 75 miles an hour. Now, think of that. Our conception of speed has changed so radically in the past 50 years, but your rate was considered quite phenomenal at the time, was it not? Well, we thought it was, yes. It was more than a mile a minute in 1911. Now, sir, was the Indianapolis 500 as dangerous then as it is now? Well, it isn't any more dangerous now, I don't think, than it was then. 
but uh, it's, it's still safer than it is riding on the highways with some of these hot rodders. <laughs> that is a matter of opinion. Now, sir, you drove a specially built and equipped racer. How much did your vehicle cost you? About $2,000. Uh, $2,000. By contrast, Mr. Foyt, how much did your Bose Seal Fast <laughs> special cost? Around $30,000. <laughs> Around $30,000. May I ask you what makes a man want to go into a race that is so obviously and so consistently dangerous? Well, any time you travel, you know, there's a high rate of speed. You know, it's a little dangerous. But uh, you take the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, for instance. The racetrack is a real safe racetrack. And, you know, they have guards and everything that control it. And uh, actually, if it was real dangerous, I don't think I'd be out there. So I don't consider it to be so dangerous myself. Both of these gentlemen say that it's not dangerous. An insurance salesman will tell you that their rate of insurance is about twice what it costs us <laughs> to drive on the highway. We are honored to have you both with us tonight. The 1911 and the 1961 Auto Racing Champions, your money and your Bristol Myers gift package will be waiting for you off stage. You're very proud. could do about two hours of shows just for those two fellows. It's fascinating. I'm sorry we have to hurry. Now, let's see if you can guess the answer to this important question. Does she or doesn't she? Gives a fellow confidence to know he's loved, admired. Gives a lady confidence, too. You can see it in her happy, relaxed look. Her sparkling hair color just naturally keeps a woman looking younger, prettier, feeling more confident. Does she or doesn't she? Miss Clairol hair color looks so natural, only her hairdresser knows for sure. Yet only a few months ago, Junior came popping in to ask, Mommy, who's older, you or Daddy? She's really five years younger than her husband. But fading or graying hair makes a woman look so much older. Now she uses Miss Clairol, and her hair glows with young color. And the hair itself is lovelier, lightlier. What's more, Miss Clairol really covers gray. Looks so natural, only her hairdresser knows for sure. So try Miss Clairol hair color bath tomorrow. Guaranteed by good housekeeping. Now our special guest tonight comes to us from the world of business and high finance. He sits on the board of directors of many companies. He is the president of several businesses, uh, business enterprises. He is also the founder and vice president of a new greeting card company called Charlie's Chuckle Cards. <laughs> Here is Cliff Marquette as Charlie Weaver. Good to be here. I'm automatically yeah. happy when you're around. I am. Yeah, and you know some of you're in a... Am I breathing on you, honey? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you do, I'll breathe right back, and there will be. And there will be right back at Hurley's. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, here is an amazing man. He has a career in show business that can keep you busy every day of the week, and yet he takes the time to get involved in all these various business enterprises. Why do you do it? You don't need the money, Charlie. Oh, no, no, I don't do it for money. No, good. You see, there are many reasons for these sidelines. Well, all right. What, uh, I, I, I thought that was the case. What are some of the reasons? Well, uh, I need the money. <laughs> I need the last year's taxes on the, on the sidelines. <laughs> no, I really enjoy most of this competition of business, you know. I like to wheel and deal. Yeah. Yeah. And after all, competition is the backbone of our great country. Yes, sir. Uh, there you go. <laughs> well, anyway, you know, if, if people compete, they, 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 they never get fat and lazy, mm -hmm. which brings us to your panel. <laughs> well, it brings us to about half of them, I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, uh, so now uh, carry on. Well, what is your you know, your, your panel works as a team on this show. Yes, they do. And that's all very nice, but... Think how much more exciting it would be if they were to compete with one another in a cutthroat race to be the first to guess a secret. That sounds They fun. must be the first, and they must guess real fast. All right, how can we do this, huh? Well, I have four different secrets. Ah. Uh -huh. You see now, one for each panelist on the, on the, on the thing. On the panel, yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot the word, panelist. <laughs> uh, they're all pretty simple, and whichever panelist guesses his secret first will get a prize. 
Well, I tell and you what. What is you're... that prize, sir? No, he wants this to be a real. He wants this to be a real contest. The winner, the first one to guess his individ... his or her individual secret, will receive a five dollar rate. Eighty percent rate. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> now here, Willis, you tie that under your chin, honey. <laughs> put, it, put it over your head. That's right, tie it under your chin. Thanks a lot, Charlie. Right up there, it's a barbecue rack. The head steaks later. Tie it under your chin, honey, put it up there. The head squeeze. And you oh, may come into right? Idlewild before you know it. Are we... <laughs> <laughs> Is it supposed to be under your chin? Oh, Henry. Up on the top. It's a round thing, he's got a square head, you see that? You have a go. nice head. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. All right, now, here is the secret that Bess is going to have to guess about herself. Here's what Bess has to guess. She can't see this. Has to guess about herself. Can we see Bess? <clears throat> I guess no, I guess we And, Charlie, here is what Henry has to guess about himself. Henry, you're askew. <laughs> and you're another. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I guess. Here's what Betsy's going to have to guess about her. Oh. God bless you. God bless you. Gary. Yes? Can we look at each other's secrets? Other oh, but not yours. Oh, sorry. Can't look at your own. No. All right, and this is or... what Bill's going to have to guess about himself. Turn your head around, honey. All right. We're coming in for a landing. I'll tell you, man, you're going to be coming around. Now, panel, you can look at each other's secrets if you like, but no cheating or helping one no another. Now. Remember, this is a competition. The winner gets a $5 rate. All right. And you got to talk fast. you got to answer fast. Right. Right. Okay? All right. I leave. Now, also, <laughs> around, I will tell you, I will tell you this, Please, that so instead of the though. long questioning period, you get one question each. We'll keep going around until somebody guesses. All right, that person will be the winner, and we will start with, uh, oh, the clues. A uh, clue. Your clue, <laughs> each clue is different, by the way, so listen carefully. Right. It concerns something of yours. Me. Yeah, yes. Right. And something that he did. Something I did tonight. Yeah. And Betsy, this also concerns a possession of yours and something that he is doing with it. Yes. Henry. Yeah. Oh. Your is concerns something that he is going to do. To you. Bess. <laughs> That's awful good, isn't it, honey? Oh, indeed. <laughs> Bess, it concerns something that he has. For you. For you. For all me. right, now we'll start with Bill mm -hmm. Cullen. One question apiece, and let's go fast. First of all, Charlie, my respects. Did it have anything to do with my clothing? No. Does it have anything to do with my clothing? Yes. Are you going to kiss me goodnight? Yes. <laughs> oh, now stop that. <laughs> no. Uh, I always do, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be our <laughs> secret. <laughs> Charlie, this thing that you have, would I recognize it? Will I recognize it when I see it? Immediately. <laughs> Come, Will, fast. Oh, uh, does it... I'm sorry for too oh, much time. Okay, uh, Betsy? Uh, are you wearing what, something of mine? Yes. You're going to buy me a booze later. Yes. <laughs> uh, is it a member of my family? No. <laughs> is it a member of my family? Yes. Is it above your waist? Yes. Is it? <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> you're going to buy me a booze and then kiss me goodnight. Yes. Is, it, um, is, is it any of my wearing apparel? No. Is it my wife? Yes. Oh, is it, is it something of my I'm, husband? <laughs> no. All right, Henry. Yeah, you know, he, he, he gave me two yeses, and I don't know whether yeah. I'm getting even warm or not. I, I think he's got a ringworm over here. <laughs> Are you getting warmer? You're not, are you going to give me anything? Yes. If you get warmer, I'll give you a kiss and some booze. <laughs> yeah. um, are, are we going to do this thing together, Charlie? Is I hope a, not. Are you involved? Oh, well, I'm involved, yes. yes. You, you're going to give my wife a kiss. And, no, uh, no, no. Involved. Can I see it now? That's the show's been off for years. <laughs> been off. I can't see it now. All right, Henry. What? <laughs> well, this thing that you have to me, is it valuable? Very valuable, yes. It is? Did you do something to my wife, Charlie? <laughs> if you did, we're finished. <laughs> 
wrong conjunction. And B Betsy, you stop reading in, in his glasses. <laughs> Oh, yeah. get back in the no, back. Is it is it under your hat? Yes. Oh. Oh, in your hat, eh? <laughs> <laughs> under his hat. Oh. Charlie, Charlie, can I put it in the bank? Yes. Is, is did, was it a physical thing? <laughs> He's really in a rut. Right, <laughs> yes, yes. Is it something I would wear under my hat? <laughs> no. Is this going to make me any happier? No. Is this going to make me happier? I think so, yes. We say, oh, good hell. Oh. Right, we've blown the whole game. Yeah. We'll have well, to go back. Uh, uh, Bess, you think you got an idea? I don't know. Is he going to pay me some kind of money? Let's find out as we go over there, huh? Put it in the bank? Mm -hmm. All right, let's, uh, let's leave Bill to last under the circumstances. And we'll go to I would say so. Bess, are you yeah. concerned with something hot. that's under his hat? Can we remove it very carefully? Is your little hat? Oh, <laughs> And we got that from her apartment, didn't you we? Which wife is it? Yes, yes, your husband is a sneak. He let us it in. Terrible, really, that one. What have you for Miss Bess? Miss Bess? Bless your heart. Here's your paycheck, three hundred and twenty dollars. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got a you notice it's, not, it's signed by Ed Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to uh, let's go to Henry. Henry. Bless your heart, you don't know what it is, huh? Oh, Henry, it's too much. Oh, Henry, oh, it's too much. Oh. here's a subpoena. <laughs> and it is legitimate, too. It happens that a friend of Henry's is involved in a civil suit. He knew he was going to be subpoenaed sooner or later, but not by Charlie Wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> it's binding, too. Oh. Charlie, you're a cat. I am a dirty old cat. <laughs> <laughs> take a look at your own side. Oh, can I look at my own side? Take a look at your antenna. Thank you. I just want to say, yes, I believe that. Bill, dear Will, you owe me $27.50. <laughs> well, listen, considering what I thought for a while, yeah, I'll, it out. I'll double it. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Myers is down by Nino. Crystal Myers also brings her candid camera to show your local listings for time and day. to you by Crystal Myers, makers of Buckman for relief from headache pain, and by Miss Clarol, hair color so natural only your hairdresser knows for sure. This is John Cannon speaking.